Hi there, welcome to Homeschooling with Hera. I hope everyone is well. The term verb must be quite familiar to you. But if you know this definition only that verb is a word that shows an action, so this video is for you. Because this definition of verb is valid only till kindergarten. And if you are not in kindergarten, so you need to learn a little more about verb and its types. So come on, without any delay, let's dive into it. The definition of verb is something like this. Verb is a word that shows an action or a state. Now, what does it mean? See these examples. She sings very well. In this sentence, the word sings is an action verb. You can see this action, you can see the movements. However, in this sentence, she is a singer. We do not have any action, but still we have a verb. And this verb is a state verb. These two types of verbs are the basic types. And you must have an idea that how many times we read sentences in which we do not have any action verb, but we do have a state verb. So this part of the definition is always missing when we are teaching verb to our students. And this creates a lot of confusions because they have in their mind that verb is a word that shows an action and then they are not able to underline or find out the verb in sentences like these. So come on, let's move forward and see what are the nine types of verb. The first is action verb, then state verb, Transitive verbs, intransitive verbs, auxiliary verbs, model verbs or model auxiliary, phrasal verbs, regular verbs, and irregular verbs. Most of these types are quite simple. You will get them very fast. So come on, let's understand all these with few examples. Let's start learning about the types of verbs. The first is action verb, the words that show actions. Like he jumps, I eat, they play. Jumps, eat and play are action verbs, right? The second type is a state verb. As the name shows that state verbs do not show any action. They are still, they are stative. But when do we use them? State verbs are used to show the thoughts or opinions like I agree, I disagree, she believes, he thinks or feelings or emotions like I love pets, I hate pets, she wants, he likes, and so many words like this. Senses and perceptions, like the food smells good, you look good, I feel cold, and so on. Then we have possessions. To show the possessions, again, we cannot use any action verb, we need some state verb, that is have, has, or had. For the present tense, we use has and have. According to the subject, with third person singular, use has, and with all other subjects, use have. Like, I have a pet, she has a pet, he has a pet, we had a pet. Okay, if we are talking about past, we need to use had. Then state verbs also used to show profession or position. Like, I am a teacher. Being teacher is my profession, so the verb am here is acting as a state verb. Or, he lives in Japan. The verb lives here is also not showing any action. It is a state of somebody that he lives in Japan. So, as you can see that in all these verbs, you cannot find any physical action. But it is really difficult to memorize all the state verbs. So, what is the trick to find out the state verbs? Just think about a physical action. If the word is believe, so can you act it? Can you think of an action that, that can demonstrate the verb believe or agree or want? So if you find out any sentence in which you need to underline a verb, whether it's a state or action verb, just think a little that is the verb is showing an action or simply a state and you will get it right for sure. Now come on, let's move on to the next type of verb. Intransitive and transitive verbs, they are more simpler. Intransitive verbs are verbs that do not need a direct object. Like, she loved. She loved is a complete thought, a complete sentence. We do not need to give the reason that why she loved. Or I read. Or he drives. 
In these sentences, we do not need a direct object. However, in the transitive verbs, we need a direct object after the verb. Like, I love. I love. What do I love? I need an object to be here. So this sentence is not completed. However, if I write it like this, I love my country. Now the sentence or the thought is completed and this verb is transitive verb because it cannot work without an object. See one more example. He supports. He supports. What does he support? The thought is not completed. He supports the poors. So support is a transitive verb because it needs an object. So whenever in your exam or any paper you are asked to underline or mark intransitive and transitive verbs, so look for the verb that whether it needs an object to give a complete sense or it is already completed. Sometimes it may happen that a verb is transitive as well as intransitive. Like he left the city. Here the verb left is transitive. If I say he left, what he left, right? But if I use the verb here in this sentence, after finishing his work, he left. Now in this sentence, the verb left is giving the sense without an object as well. So this is intransitive. The next step that we are discussing here is auxiliary verbs, commonly known as helping verbs. These verbs are used to support the main verb. And we need them mostly when we are dealing with different tenses. For example, I am cooking food. It's present continuous. So to support the main verb cooking, we need the auxiliary verb am. She does not talk much. Here the verb does is supporting the main verb talk. He has been waiting for you. Again, the verb has been is supporting the main verb waiting. The three most common auxiliary verbs are be, do and have in their different forms. The different forms of verb be are is, am, are, was, were, been and being. Different forms of verb do are do, does and did. And then we have the verb have in its form has, have, and had. You may find be verb as a main verb in many sentences, but if there is another verb after the be verb, like here it was cooking or here it was waiting, so any of this can become the helping verb. And we can guess the tense of the sentence with the help of these verbs. The next type of verb is model verbs. Model verbs are a type of auxiliary verbs which express ability, permission, possibility, and obligation. Now, what does it mean? As I told you that auxiliary verbs are helping verbs, so model verbs are also helping verbs, and they help us to talk about ability, permission, possibility, and obligation. The model verbs that you can use for ability are can and could. Could be used for the past tense and can is for present. I couldn't sing well, but now I can. For permission, we can use can or may, like can I open the door or may I come in. We can also use could for permission if we want to be very polite. Like if you want to ask an elderly person to move aside, so you can say, could you move? Now the third thing is possibility. To talk about possibility, we can use could, may, and might. The difference between these three is just about the intensity. Like if we say it could rain, so it means it is likely to rain. The clouds are there, it could rain. It may rain, it is a less possible situation. And it might rain is something that is least possible, right? Model verbs also help us to talk about obligations or suggestions or advices. We can use could, should, and must. Like you can say you could go to doctor. It is not really urgent. It is a simple advice or simple suggestion or obligation. 
you should go to doctor it is something that somebody is saying strongly and you must go to doctor it means that there is no other way you need to visit the doctor right now right so could should and must can be used in sentences when you are talking about obligations or suggestions or advices depending upon the urgency of the situation right as we all know that all verbs have three different versions present past and past participle so the seventh and eighth category depend on this at number seven we have regular verbs regular verbs need the addition of ed at the end of them to be used in past or past participle tense like the first form of verb or the present form is walk the past is walked with ed and the past participle is also walked with ed the verb is watch the past form is watched and the past participle is also watched so the verbs that follow this pattern are called regular verbs however if the verbs do not follow this rule or this pattern they are called irregular verbs like eat ate eaten the past and the past participle form are totally different drive drove driven there are lots and lots of examples of both type of verbs but when we introduce verbs to children we go for regular verbs first and then we move on to irregular verbs because there are some really common verbs that are irregular like eat drink drive and so on and now we have phrasal verbs phrasal verbs are made up of several words together usually with the combination of a verb plus preposition or a verb plus an adverb for example take off put on melt down put up with get away with now this is something difficult for the students or for non-native english speakers because phrasal verbs have no rules they have multiple meanings they cannot be self-constructed and we need to memorize them like for the phrasal verb take off you can also take off your shoes and the plane also takes off when it flies right so to use phrasal verbs correctly and to understand their meaning we need to prepare ourselves or our students to use them properly because you cannot use these words with their literal meanings so that's all for today's video i hope it would be useful for you soon i will try to make a separate video around every type of verb to explain it further with lots and lots of examples bye for now don't forget to like the video and also don't forget to make it a great day bye